What is the language using us for? said Malcolm Mooney, moving away slowly over the white language. Where am I going? said Malcolm Mooney. Certain experiences seem to not want to go into language, maybe because of shame or the reader's shame. Let us observe Malcolm Mooney. Let us get through the suburbs and drive out further, just for fun, to see what he will do. Reader, it does not matter. He is only going to be myself and for you, slightly you, wanting to be another. He fell, he falls, tenses are everywhere, deep down into a glass jail. I am in a telephoneless blue, green crevasse, and I can't get out. I pay well for my messages being hoisted up when you're about. I suppose you read them under the light of midnight of the dancing men. The point is, would you ever want to be here, down on the freezing line, reading the words that steam out against the ice? Anyhow, draw this folded message up between the leaning prisms from me below. Slowly, over the white language, comes Malcolm Mooney, the saviour. My left leg has no feeling. What is the language using us for? So I think I wanted to start my 52 poems in 52 weeks project with this poem because for me it gets to the core or at least moves in the direction of getting to the core of why we learn poetry um, or maybe just why we do anything why do we make videos on youtube what is the language using us for and what are we using the language for I was watching this fantastic uh, TED talk this morning by the conductor Benjamin Zander and I think he asks the same question but he does it through a Chopin prelude and the question that he asks which I think is also universalized in this poem is not just what is the language using us for but also what is art using us for? What is poetry using us for? What is nature using us for? Uh, what are other people using us for? And in turn, what are we using all of these things for? I suppose really um, what it boils down to is, you know, what's it all about, Malcolm Mooney? And language is inherent to this question because we are creatures of language. This is how we explore our world. This is how we find meaning. There's this fantastic quote by Vladimir Nabok... There's this fantastic quote... <laughs> There's this fantastic quote by Vladimir Nabokov where he says something like, I think like a genius, I write like a distinguished author, and I speak like a child. And I can certainly identify with that. This is probably the, the fifth take um, of this particular sentence that I'm uh, saying here. And again, <laughs> I think this is about language and the knots it ties us into. And this is what, um, for me anyway, W.S. Graham is setting out to explore in this poem. Is it the experiences themselves that don't want to go into language, I wonder? Or is it the shameful, fretful, clamming up around language or through language when we try to think about or feel our way into these experiences? I love how this stanza talks about how shame so often contaminates and corrupts and essentially throttles um, our language and our expression, the way we speak to ourselves and for ourselves uh, through language. One of my favorite writers is uh, a guy called Wayne Kustenbaum and in this book here, Humiliation, um, he, he's got some great things to say about this. Uh, I just want to read you this little passage here. He says, I don't like 
confident literature, or literature that seems immune to self-incrimination. Literature should bear witness to the fact that the writer was humiliated by the very process of writing the work. The production of language, making words happen, is a lowering act, like revealing my sperm-stained dress at a trial or showing the judge the inside of my mouth. Language isn't transcendent. Every sentence, however stuffed and upholstered with confident maturity, attests to that earlier infant time when we couldn't master words. I love this. And I don't like confident literature either. I don't like poems that are overconfident. Um, this is not a supremely confident and bumptious poem. Far from it. It's quite a vulnerable poem. I think if you're coming to these videos with the hope that I'm going to give you a um, very uh, literary, uh, historical reading of the poems that I've memorized by heart, you're probably going to be disappointed. Um, when I'm learning these poems, uh, it really becomes completely about the relationship between me and the poem. And I'm not massively interested, although of course I'm also obsessively interested in what other people have to say about the poem um, and what people have to say about W.S. Graham, for example, and who he was. But it's also predominantly about um, me having a kind of conversation with the poem and the poem feeling like it's living in the presence. So here where he talks about, um, you know, <laughs> getting through the suburbs and driving out further, um, I live in the suburbs, I relate to that. Um, and I also feel like it's Graham in a way saying, you know, when he says, reader, it does not matter. I feel it's, it's him sort of validating my approach to engaging with his poem in this way. He's saying, listen, have a conversation with the poem. Um, read what you like into it. Read yourself into it. Um, uh, you know, he recognizes that Mooney is himself and he recognizes that we're going to, we're going to, we can't help but um, find ourselves in the poem and in him, um, almost treating the poem a little bit like a kind of a raw shark. Uh, uh, it makes me think of this um, fantastic um, idea from Adam Phillips um, in, a, in a recent interview where he talks about uh, this sort of utopian ideal, this utopian notion he has, where we might live in a world where nobody has to convince anybody of anything. Um, it's not about the persuasion game, as he calls it. It's more about us enjoying being in our own delirium and sort of enjoying each other's delirium and, um, and what we consciously, but also unconsciously, uh, bring out in each other and communicate to each other. So here's a good example of this. Um, I mean, this poem was written 50 years ago. This poem was written in an analog age. Uh, there were no computers. Um, there were proper, you know, telephones with those, um, you know, the, the, the dials. Yeah, those ones. I don't even know the names of those telephones. What were they called? Anyway, there were those telephones. And, um, but when you learn the poem, when you spend, you know, something like, I don't know, I've probably spent about 30 hours with this poem in the last um, week or two. When you learn the poem, it's as if the poem has been written yesterday. In fact, it's as if the poem is being written by you. It sometimes feels that way um, as you take it into yourself and essentially it becomes part of your DNA. So when he's talking here about this 
telephoneless blue green crevasse i suppose in some way he's talking about the human condition he's talking about the fact that we're all um sort of sort of stuck here in some sense um on the blue green planet um which can sometimes feel a bit like a crevasse it can feel a bit like a kind of uh, a sort of rut but for me he's also talking here about our digital age uh, even though of course the poem when it was written wouldn't have known what that meant um, so when he talks about you know paying well for my messages being hoisted up when you're about um, I think about my you know virgin media bill which I pay well for those uh, messages um, being hoisted up and uh, sent out, emailed out, or whatever. And similarly, the whole thing about, I suppose you read them under the light of midnight of the dancing men. Here, um, for me, this has completely become about social media and the fact that we're all living in different time zones. So I might sort of tweet something um, in my time zone. And then when I'm sleeping, it's maybe read in someone else's time zone and commented upon. Um, and there's a sort of frustration there, um, as well as a pleasure. And so in this way, the medium of the poem um, and the media that exist in this poem uh, become immediately updated, in my experience, as soon as you start learning the poem. Uh, this becomes a very, very contemporary poem. Um, and I suppose that's what we mean when we say that a poem is um, timeless and universal. This line too can't help but resonate when you're sitting um, in an empty room uh, with a, a camera tripod in front of you and a, an iPhone attached to the top of it, essentially speaking to yourself, but also knowing or hoping that what you're saying is moving out and touching um, other people through their phones and their screens or however they um, if they pick up this message uh, and there's again that sense of that sort of bittersweet sense of um, wouldn't it be great if you were here and I could actually communicate this to you a sort of yearning but also um, well you know isn't it fantastic certainly this is how I feel isn't it fantastic that I can connect with you in this way you know um, draw this folded message up um, between the leaning prisms from me below. For me, this is um, perhaps the key line of the poem. And it's also the key line because I'm really not sure what he means here. Why does he suddenly say or notice my left leg has no feeling? Um, I'd really be interested in, in your thoughts about this. One thing we're pretty sure about is that uh, what we call feeling, what we call emotions, actually starts with sensation, starts with physical uh, sensations. And this uh, seems to fall on a scale between pleasant or unpleasant and um, excited or stimulated, charged on the one hand and calm on the other. And so we have a sensation that has some of these properties. Um, say I might have um, at the moment a kind of a kind of tight feeling um, in, in my sternum. And what happens is that the brain then uh, receives this um, sensation kind of as raw data and it starts to try and figure out, a bit like we're trying to figure out what this poem is about, um, it starts to try and figure out, well, what does this mean? And it might then put language on it. It might say, okay, well, you're feeling anxious, but what kind of anxious? Um, is it uh, worried anxious? Is it overwhelmed anxious? Is it insecure anxious? Is it uh, threatened anxious? Um, you know, there are hundreds of different uh, forms of anxiety and a lot of those um, anxious states are learned concepts. These are um, as much part of the culture as they are um, about the actual sensations, the actual experience of anxiety that we're going through. So um, 
I suppose what people like Feldman Barrett are saying is that um, half the time we don't really know what's going on inside us and <laughs> and when we get some kind of inkling we then try and put some language on that but that to a certain extent obscures quite often can obscure things even further so we come back at the end of the poem and I should say that actually this isn't really the end of the poem this is um, actually the end of the first section of the poem what I thought I would do is uh, as I go through the 52 weeks um, learn uh, different session, sections as we go along so this is the first section of what is the language using us for and you can read the whole poem if you like um, online um, I'll, I'll give you a link for that but when we get to the end of the first section um, in a way we're still left dangling right what is the language using us for are we any wiser after having traveled uh, through these stanzas with W.S. Graham I'd be really interested to know what you think um, I'd also really appreciate it if you've uh, enjoyed any of these thoughts and particularly if you've enjoyed some of um, W.S. Graham's poetry if you would consider sponsoring me for my 52 poems in 52 weeks project which is um, a project that I'm also doing in order to uh, raise some funds for the Safe House Education Fund in uh, Kenya. It'd be really great if you could have a look at my fundraising page which is um, somewhere up there I think if you click on the 52 button and um, that will take you to the page which will explain a little bit more about the Safe House Education Fund and what this project is all about as well um, I really really appreciate it if you could have a look at that and consider um, donating to the fund um, and with that I will see you next week with another poem bye